Suppose you have an infinitely large piece of paper. There is an infinite sequence of vertices marked on this paper. For each pair of vertices, you flip a fair coin. If it is heads, you join them using an arc called an edge. Otherwise, you don't join them. After doing all of the infinitely many coin flips, one for each pair of vertices, you would end up with a figure called a graph. Now, suppose your friend does the same with your own paper, flipping coins and joining the edges randomly. The question is, what is the probability that both of you and your friend end up drawing the exact same graph? In technical terms, isomorphic graphs. Here, the vertices are indistinguishable from one another. So, for example, the graph representing a pentagon and the graph representing a five-pointer star are regarded as the same graph, since you can unfold the star to make a pentagon. Well, this question seems silly and really difficult at the first look. So, let me give you the answer right away. The answer is... 1. What? That's exactly my reaction when I first saw this. It might be hard to believe, but it is true. There is a 100% chance that both of you end up drawing the exact same graph. However, keep in mind, when it comes to infinite settings, 100% probability doesn't mean it always happens. It just means it almost surely happens. Even if it means almost surely, this is still very surprising and mysterious. In this video, we'll uncover this mystery by investigating a graph which looks innocent at the first look but hides a great deal of surprises behind. Well, let's begin. As I said, we'll first investigate this innocent-looking graph, which is called the radiograph. You first lay out an infinite sequence of vertices labeled 1, 2, 3, and so on. Let's take a look at how the edges are drawn. Look at two vertices x and y, with x smaller than y. We will draw them by an edge if the eighth digit of y is odd. Otherwise, if the eighth digit of y is even, we don't join them. Here, the digits are counted starting from the right. So, for example, 1 is joined to all the odd numbers, because a number is odd if and only if its first digit is odd. 2 is joined to, for example, 10, 11, 12, 572, Everything with an odd number in its second digit. Here, notice that the second digit of a single digit number is regarded as zero, so vertex 2 is not joined to 3, 4, 5, and up to 9. Well, this construction seems to come out of the blue and quite random. However, this innocent looking graph hides an amazing property which on the surface also looks innocent. Have a look. Take two disjoint subsets of vertices, say U and W. Here, in this example, U contains 1, 3, and 5, and W contains 2 and 6. Now, make a number by putting an odd digit at 1st, 3rd, and 5th places and put an even digit at 2nd and 6th places. You can write anything you want on the other places. Then you can see that this newly generated vertex will be joined to every vertex in U, but not joined to any vertex in W. There is a subtle detail here is that this newly generated vertex lies outside of both U and W. Of course, this holds in general. For any two finite disjoint subsets U and W, 
there is a vertex outside of u and w, which is joined to every vertex in u, but none in w. This property is called the extension property. But let's just call it a killer property because it is going to kill all the intuitions. This scalar property looks normal on the surface, but you'll notice something fishy once you realize what you can do with it. Let g be any graph on finite or countably infinite number of vertices. Here, as an example, we have drawn a finite graph g. Can you find the exact same copy of g inside the radial graph? The answer is, surprisingly, yes for any graph G you can imagine. Let's take an attempt for this particular graph G. First, identify V1 with an arbitrary vertex of the radial graph. Now, let U be the set containing V1 and W be the empty set. Then, by the Kähler property, we can find a vertex that is connected to V1. We will identify this vertex with V2. Let's continue to V3. To find V3 inside of the radial graph, let's take U to be the set containing V1 and W be the set containing V2. By the Kähler property, we can indeed find a vertex that is connected to V1 but not V2. We're identifying this newly generated vertex with V3. At this point, you might see what we're doing. Give a guess, how would you find V4 inside of the radial graph? Well, here comes the answer. Put U be the set containing V2 and V3, and W be the set containing V1. Then, by the Kähler property, we can find the copy of V4 inside of the radial graph. Continuing this manner by putting things you wish to join in U and things you don't wish to join in W, we'll eventually find the exact same copy of G inside the radial graph. To sum up, we have the following theorem. Let G be any graph on finite or countably infinite number of vertices. Then the radial graph contains the induced copy of G. Here. Countably infinite just means that the vertices are laid out in an infinite sequence and induced copy means that both edges and non-edges of G are copied into the radial graph. This theorem is amazing. Just think about it. Every single finite or countably infinite graph you can imagine, no matter how complicated it is, can be found as an exact copy inside of the radial graph. So the radial graph is like the mother of all the finite and countably infinite graphs. Well, suddenly this graph no longer seems innocent at all. We now have all the evidence ready to build up our proof for the surprise mentioned at the start of the video. Let's see how things roll out. We'll prove the assertion in two steps. Step 1, we'll show that the radial graph is the only graph with the Kähler property. Step 2, we'll show that when a graph is randomly generated by flipping a coin for each edge, then the probability that the graph has the Kähler property is equal to 1. Once both of these steps are done, we can deduce with probability 1 that both of you and your friend have drawn the radial graph and hence, your graphs will be isomorphic with probability 1. Now, step 1 is to prove that the radial graph is the only graph with the Kähler property. So let G be any graph that has the Kähler property. We'll establish the bijection between the radial graph and G using the exact same trick that we did before. 
enumerate the vertices of G with labels 1, 2, 3, and so on. For the sake of clarity, I won't draw the vertices in for now. First, I identify vertex 1 of the radiograph with the vertex 1 of G. Next, we'll use the same procedure that we used to find the desired bijection. So, take vertex 2 of the radiograph and find its copy in G using the Kähler property. Then onto vertex 3. Take vertex 3 of the radiograph and find its copy in G using the Kähler property. And so on. However, there's one problem with this approach. Can you spot it? Yes, we are only ensuring that every vertex of the radiograph gets matched. But however, this matching might leave some vertices of G behind. Thankfully, this annoying issue can be solved by applying a simple twist. Instead of looking only at the radiograph and find the partners, we will alternately give our attention to both G and the radiograph. Let's see. As before, identify 1 with 1. Then look for the smallest and matched vertex in the radiograph and find its copy inside of G. Next, we switch our attention to the smallest and matched vertex inside of G and find its copy back in the radiograph. This procedure of alternately giving attention to both G and the radiograph and finding the smallest and matched vertex ensures that every vertex eventually finds its partner. Thus, we have constructed the bijection which also preserves edges. Therefore, we have shown that G and the radiograph are the same graph. This completes our proof for the step 1. Step 2 is rather intuitively obvious. We will show that the probability that the Kähler property fails to hold is 0. So, fix two finite disjoint subsets U and W. We wish to find the probability that U and W fail to satisfy the Kähler property. To do that, fix vertex V outside of U and W. We'll call V good if it is joined to all of U, but none of W. Then, the probability that V is good is some positive real number. Hence, the probability that V is bad is also some positive real number lying strictly between 0 and 1. Let's call this number P. You can easily work out the exact value of P, but all you need is the fact that it is positive and is less than 1. Now, if we have another vertex V star outside of U and W, the probability that both V and V star are bad is P squared, since of course, these events are independent. In general, if we have k vertices outside of U and W, the probability that all of them are bad is p to the power of k. However, since p is strictly between 0 and 1, this number tends to 0 as we pick more and more vertices. Therefore, the probability that U and W fail to satisfy the Kähler property is indeed 0. Now we are ready to compute the probability that the original random graph fails to satisfy the Kähler property. Note that this probability is at most the sum of probabilities that U and W fail to satisfy the Kähler property, where the summation is taken over all finite disjoint subsets U and W. Since each sum is 0 and there are countably infinite sum ends, indeed, the probability that our random graph fails to have the Kähler property is also zero. Hence, with probability 1, our random graph has the Kähler property. Now that both steps are proven, we can safely say that both of you and your friend have drawn the radiograph with probability 1, and so your graphs will be isomorphic with probability 1. Well, that was quite a journey, isn't it? But all it took was the radiograph and its game-breaking Kähler property. Actually, the problem mentioned in this video is just 
rephrasing of some theorem that is quote-unquote well-known in the field of infinite graphs. If you generate each edge of a countably infinite graph with probability 1 over 2, then there is probability 1 that this graph will be isomorphic to the radiograph, which is what we proved in the two steps. So for this reason, mathematicians never say take a random graph on countably many vertices. They say take the random graph. The legend of the radiograph doesn't end here. It still has a load of secrets to offer, and for some deep reasons, it even has connections with the logic of graphs, which I know nothing about. Anyway, this video is going for a while, and I think this is a good place to stop. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a like, and also subscribe if you wish. See ya!